Fourier series represents a periodic function in a fixed interval as a superposition of sinusoidal functions. And it is often desirable to extend this formalism to functions that are defined over an infinite interval and have no particular periodicity. And such a representation is called a Fourier transform and is one of a class of representations called integral transforms. So we'll begin by considering Fourier transforms as a generalization of Fourier series and then go on to discuss the properties of Fourier transform and its applications. Frequently in mathematical physics, we encounter pairs of functions that are related by an expression of the form g alpha equal to integral a to b f t k alpha t dt. In this expression, the function g alpha is called the integral transform of f t by the kernel k alpha t. Depending on the choice of the kernel and the range of integration, a large number of integral transforms do exist. For example, uh, if k alpha t is defined to be e rise to i alpha t, then that is known as a Fourier transform. And mathematically, a Fourier transform is represented as g alpha is equal to integral 0 to infinite ft e rise to i alpha t dt. Now, if k alpha t is equal to e rise to minus alpha t, then that will be known as a Laplace transform. And in that case, g alpha will be equal to integral 0 to infinite ft e rise to minus alpha t dt. Now we have Melian transform where k alpha t is defined to be t rise to alpha minus 1. And in that case, g alpha will be equal to integral 0 to infinite then ft t alpha rise to minus 1 times dt. Now for Henkel transforms, k alpha t is defined to be t times the Bessel function jn alpha t so that g alpha will be equal to integral 0 to infinite ft times t jn alpha t dt. Then finally we have the Fourier sine transform for that the kernel is sine alpha t and g alpha is defined likewise as integral 0 to infinite ft then sine alpha t dt. So these are the different integral transforms. Now the integral transform may be described as a mapping of a function ft which is defined in the t space into another function g alpha that is defined in the alpha space. If we consider the Fourier transform that is defined in the frequency domain, this is integral 0 to infinite ft e rise to i omega t times dt. So on the right hand side of this equation we have a term that is defined in the t space or t domain and this mathematical process converts the function that is defined in the t space to another function which is defined in the frequency uh, space or frequency domain. So Fourier transform is essentially a transform from the time domain to the frequency domain. All the integral transforms show the linearity property. That is, if we define integral a to b c1 f1t plus c2 f2t as the function in the t space multiplied by the kernel k alpha t dt, then this is equal to c1 integral a to b f1t k alpha t dt plus c2 
times integral a to b f to t k alpha t dt or if we have integral a to b c times f t multiplied by the kernel k alpha t dt this can be very well written as c times integral a to b f t then k alpha t dt so in this case c1 and c2 are constants and f1 t and f2 t are functions for which the transform operation is defined now another important property is that if we represent a linear integral transform by the operator l we obtain g alpha which is equal to l operating on ft we can also expect an inverse operator l l inverse such that ft will be equal to l inverse g alpha so that is the inverse transform let's now discuss about the application of integral transforms let us assume that we have a problem that is difficult to solve using the conventional techniques so in such kind of situations the use of integral transforms comes handy what we do is that using the integral transform we will transform that function into the transform space and we will solve that in that particular space and the solution in the transform space will be converted into the original space using the inverse transform so this is how we make use of integral transforms to solve problems that are difficult using conventional techniques we now move on to fourier integral we have already seen that a fourier series is useful in representing certain functions over a limit 0 to 2 pi minus l to plus l and so on or for an infinite interval minus infinity to plus infinity if the function is periodic we now turn our attention to the problem of representing non periodic functions over the infinite range so many problems in physics and engineering do not involve periodic functions and it is therefore desirable to generalize the fourier series method to include non periodic functions also a non periodic function can be considered as a limit of a given periodic function whose period becomes infinite let us discuss some examples so in this case in the example 1 let us consider a periodic function flx that is defined to be 0 when x between minus l by 2 and minus 1 so that is between minus l by 2 and minus 1 so here it is 0 and this is 1 when x is in between minus 1 and plus 1 so here in this region the function is 1 and it is 0 when x is in between 1 and plus l by 2 so in this particular portion the function is again zero so obviously this function has a period l which is greater than 2 or precisely it is equal to 4 now this represents the case when l becomes 8 when l becomes infinite it is shown in this figure so as l tend to infinite we obtain a non periodic function fx that is defined to be fx equal to 1 when x between minus 1 to plus 1 and fx becomes 0 otherwise
Let us consider the second example. In this case, the periodic function is defined to be glx equal to e raised to minus mod x. And the value of x is between minus l by 2 and plus l by 2 as you see in this figure. And as l tends to infinite, we obtain a non-periodic function gx that is defined to be limit l tend to infinite glx. So we understand that a non-periodic function is one whose limit is extended to infinite. And by investigating the limit that is approached by a Fourier series as the period of the given function becomes infinite, a suitable representation for non-periodic functions can perhaps be obtained. Let us now try to develop such a formalism. So we have seen that for the interval minus l to plus l, the coefficients a n and b n in the Fourier series could be written as a n equal to 1 by l integral minus l to plus l then f t cos n pi t over l dt and then b n equal to 1 over l minus l to plus l f t sin n pi t over l times dt. Now the resulting Fourier series is fx equal to a0 divided by 2 plus sum over n equal to 1 to infinite an cos n pi x over l plus bn sin n pi x over l. Now in the next step, we will insert a n and b n into this equation. So the resulting equation is f x equal to 1 over 2 l minus l to plus l f t d t plus 1 over l sum over n equal to 1 to infinite cos n pi x over l then integral minus l to plus l f t cos n pi t over l dt. Now the third term is 1 over l sum over n equal to 1 to infinite sin n pi x divided by l integral minus l to plus l f t sin n pi t over l then dt. So this is equal to 1 over 2 l integral minus l to plus l f t dt plus 1 over l sum over n equal to 1 to infinite integral minus l to plus l f t cos n pi t over l cos n pi x over l plus sin n pi t over l sin n pi x over l then dt. So this expression is in the form of cos a cos b plus sin a sin b.
and in the next step we'll write fx as equal to 1 over 2l minus l 2 plus l ft dt plus 1 over l sum over n equal to 1 to infinite integral minus l 2 plus l ft then cos n pi divided by l times t minus x dt we'll make a slight rearrangement that is 1 by 2l integral minus l 2 plus l ft dt plus 1 by pi times pi divided by l sum over n equal to 1 to infinite integral minus l 2 plus l ft cos n pi divided by l t minus x dx and now we let the parameter l approach infinity then transforming the finite interval minus l to plus l into a infinite interval minus infinity to plus infinity also we will set n pi divided by l as equal to omega so that pi by l will be equal to d omega with l becoming infinite and in that case we have fx equal to 0 plus 1 over pi sum over n equal to 1 to infinite delta omega integral minus infinity to plus infinity ft cos n pi divided by l t minus x dt The first term that is corresponding to A0 has vanished, assuming that minus infinity to plus infinity ft dt exists. Now, replacing the infinite sum by the integral over omega, we can write this as fx equal to 1 over pi integral 0 to infinite d omega, then integral minus infinity to plus infinity ft cos n pi divided by l t minus x dt and this integral is known as the Fourier integral and to satisfy this equation fx needs to satisfy certain conditions let us see those the condition on fx are it has to be piecewise continuous and it has to be piecewise differentiable and also it has to be absolutely integrable that is minus infinity to plus infinity mod fx dx has to be finite so this equation is known as the Fourier integral the Fourier integral that we have just seen has a cosine term we can very well express the Fourier integral in the exponential form let us see how to do that we have fx as equal to 1 over 2 pi integral minus infinity to plus infinity d omega integral minus infinity to plus infinity ft cos n pi divided by l t minus x dt now sin omega t minus x is an odd function of omega therefore when we calculate 1 by 2 pi integral minus infinity to plus infinity d omega then minus infinity to plus infinity ft sin n pi over l t minus x 
dx this will be equal to 0. Let us call this as equation number 1 and this as equation number 2. In the next step, we will add equations 1 and 2 with a factor i and then we obtain the Fourier integral theorem as fx equal to 1 over 2 pi integral minus infinity 2 plus infinity e raised to minus i omega x d omega integral minus infinity 2 plus infinity f t e raised to i omega t d t. So, equation 1 and 2 can be considered as equations for Fourier integrals. So, this is a Fourier integral in the exponential form and we note that there is a term omega in the expression and the variable omega introduced here is an arbitrary mathematical variable but in many physical problems however it corresponds to the angular frequency omega. And we may interpret equation number 1 or 3. Equation number 1 is the one that is consisting of the cosine term and equation number 3 is the one that has the exponential form. So, 1 and 3 are a representation of fx in terms of a distribution of infinitely long sinusoidal wave trains of angular frequency omega in which the frequency is a continuous variable. Now, we will try to understand the connection between Fourier integral and the delta function. If the order of the integration is reversed, we may write the Fourier integral as fx equal to minus infinity to plus infinity ft then 1 by 2 pi integral minus infinity to plus infinity e rise to i omega t minus x d omega then dt. Now, uh, if this equation holds for any function fx, then it tells us something remarkable about the integral 1 by 2 pi minus infinity to plus infinity e rise to i omega t minus x d omega which is considered as a function of t. This integral vanishes everywhere except at x equal to t. And when we integrate this function with respect to t over any interval including x, its value will be unity. That is, we may think of this function as having an infinitely high, infinitely narrow peak at x equal to t. And this strange function is called the Dirac's delta function, which was first introduced by Paul A. M. Dirac. Now, the delta function is mathematically defined to be delta t minus x equal to 1 over 2 pi integral minus infinity 2 plus infinity e rise to i omega t minus x d omega. We may write the Fourier integral in terms of the delta function as fx equal to integral minus infinity to plus infinity ft delta t minus x dt. So, this is the Fourier integral expressed in terms of the delta function. We move on to the formalism of Fourier transform. We define g omega which is the Fourier transform of the function ft by 1 over 2 pi integral minus infinity to plus infinity then ft e rise to i omega t dt. As we have seen in the previous sections, this equation that is a Fourier transform actually is a transformation from the t space to the omega space. Now, from the Fourier integral theorem, 
we can write the inverse relation as ft equal to 1 over 2 pi so there is a square root here 1 over square root of 2 pi then integral minus infinity to plus infinity g omega e rise to minus i omega t d omega so these equations are the Fourier transform and the inverse transform and uh, Fourier transform is a transformation from the t space to the omega space whereas the inverse relation is a transformation from the omega space to the t space now let us try to see how to write this equation in three dimension we move the Fourier transform pair to the three dimensional space as gk equal to 1 over 2 pi rise to 3 by 2 integral minus infinity to plus infinity fr e rise to i k dot r then d cube r and the inverse transform is fr equal to 1 over 2 pi rise to 3 by 2 integral minus infinity to plus infinity gk e rise to i k r with a negative sign then d cube k and the integrals are over all space a bit more information on the Fourier transform the Fourier transform is based on the kernel e rise to i omega t and its real and imaginary parts are cos omega t and sin omega t and because these kernels are the functions used to describe waves Fourier transform appears frequently in studies of waves and the extraction of information from waves particularly when phase information is involved as an example the output of a stellar interferometer involves a Fourier transform of the brightness across a stellar disk and the electron distribution in an atom may be obtained from the Fourier transform of the amplitude of the scattered x-rays and in quantum mechanics the physical origin of the Fourier relation is the wave nature of matter and our description of matter in terms of waves so we see that Fourier transforms are often associated with wave phenomena let us now discuss about Fourier cosine and sine transforms if fx is odd or even these transforms may be expressed in somewhat different form let us consider an even function fc with fcx equal to fc minus x when we write the exponential equation in trigonometric form we have gc omega as equal to 1 over square root of 2 pi integral minus infinity to plus infinity then fc t then the exponential term is written in terms of the trigonometric form as cos omega t plus i sin omega t then dt so this can be written as square root of 2 over pi integral 0 to infinite fc t cos of omega t dt because the sin omega t dependence vanishes on integration over the symmetrical interval minus infinity to plus infinity here F fc is a even function and sin is a odd function when we multiply an even and odd function we'll get a odd function again and when we in integrate that function between the limit minus infinity to plus infinity that particular term becomes zero similarly since cos omega t is even the inverse transform can be written as fc t equal to square root of 2 over pi integral 
0 to infinite gc omega then cos omega t d omega so this is the cosine transform and its inverse transform now we can formulate the Fourier sine transform in that case we will be considering a odd function that is defined to be fsx equal to negative of fs minus x now the equations are gs omega equal to square root of 2 over pi integral 0 to infinite fs t sine omega t dt and the inverse transform is fs t equal to square root of 2 divided by pi integral 0 to infinite gs omega then sine omega t d omega so this is a Fourier sine transform and the corresponding inverse transform let us now try to understand the Fourier sine transform a little bit in detail the physical interpretation of this term so in this case we have a sine term multiplied by square root of 2 divided by pi and then gs omega so the amplitude of sine omega x is given by square root of 2 by pi gs omega in which gs omega is a Fourier sine transform of fx and similar interpretation hold for cosine and the exponential case so we have formulated the Fourier integral and from there we have moved on to the Fourier transform we have seen the Fourier exponential Fourier cosine and Fourier sine transforms we will now discuss about some of the properties of Fourier transforms the first property is linearity now if fx is defined to be a1 f1 t plus a2 f2 t plus etc the other terms then the Fourier transform of ft is given by g omega equal to a1 g1 omega plus a2 g2 omega plus etc so this property is known as the linearity property let us now try to prove this the Fourier transform of ft is given by g omega equal to 1 by square root of 2 pi integral minus infinity to plus infinity then ft rise to i omega t dt so this is equal to 1 over 2 pi square root of 2 pi integral minus infinity to plus infinity when we substitute for ft this is a1 f1 t plus a2 f2 t plus the terms that come later times e rise to i omega t dt in the next step we will uh, expand this integral so this will be g omega equal to a1 times 1 by square root of 2 pi integral minus infinity to plus infinity f1 t e rise to i omega t plus a2 1 by square root of 2 pi integral minus infinity to plus infinity f2 t e rise to i omega t dt and the other terms so this means that a1 g1 omega plus a2 g2 omega plus the other terms so this proves the linearity of Fourier transforms now the second property is change of scale what it says is that if g omega is the Fourier transform of ft then the Fourier transform of f a t is 1 over a times g omega divided by a let us try to prove this the Fourier transform of the function ft 
This is equal to 1 over square root of 2 pi integral minus infinity 2 plus infinity ft e rise to i omega t dt and this is g omega. So this was the definition of the Fourier transform. Let us now try to find out f of the Fourier transform of f a t. So this is equal to 1 over square root of 2 pi integral minus infinity 2 plus infinity f of a t e rise to i omega t dt. Now in the next step we will substitute y as equal to a t. This gives us dy as equal to a times dt. Now the Fourier transform of f of y this is equal to 1 over square root of 2 pi integral minus infinity 2 plus infinity f y e rise to i omega y divided by a dy divided by a and this is equal to 1 over a times 1 over square root of 2 pi integral minus infinity to plus infinity f y e rise to i omega y over a then dy. This is nothing but 1 by a times g of omega over a thus proving the theorem that is Fourier transform of f a t equal to 1 over a times g of omega divided by a. Now the next property that we have to discuss is the shifting property. If g omega is the Fourier transform of f t, the Fourier transform of f t plus or minus a will be given by e plus or minus i omega a times g omega where a is any constant. So this is the shifting property. Let us try to prove that. We have the Fourier transform of f of t plus or minus a. This is equal to 1 over square root of 2 pi integral minus infinity to plus infinity f of t plus or minus a e rise to minus i omega t times dt. Now we will substitute t plus or minus a as equal to y. This gives us dt as equal to dy. Now the Fourier transform of f of t plus or minus a this is equal to 1 over square root of 2 pi integral minus infinity to plus infinity f y e rise to minus i omega then y minus plus a dy and this is equal to e rise to plus minus i omega a integral minus infinity to plus infinity f y e rise to minus i omega y dy and this is equal to e rise to plus minus i omega a times g omega. thus proving the shifting property. The next property is known as modulation. If g omega is a Fourier transform of ft, then Fourier transform of ft cos at is given by half g omega minus a plus half g omega plus a. Let us try to prove that. The Fourier transform of ft cos a t is given by 
1 over square root of 2 pi integral minus infinity 2 plus infinity ft cos at e rise to i omega t dt so this is equal to 1 over square root of 2 pi integral minus infinity 2 plus infinity ft We'll expand the cos term as e rise to i a t plus e rise to minus i a t divided by 2. Then this multiplied by e rise to i omega t dt. So this is equal to 1 over 2 times 1 by square root of 2 pi integral minus infinity to plus infinity ft times e rise to omega minus a t dt plus 1 over square root of 2 pi integral minus infinity to plus infinity ft e rise to omega there is an i here i omega plus a t times dt this is nothing but half of g omega minus a plus g omega plus a thus proving the theorem the next property is the conjugate property if g omega is the Fourier transform of ft then the Fourier transform of the complex conjugate of ft will be given by g star minus omega where star indicates the complex conjugate of the corresponding complex function. Let us try to prove this. We have g omega as equal to 1 over square root of 2 pi integral minus infinity to plus infinity ft e rise to i omega t dt. Now, when we take the complex conjugate on both sides, we will get g star omega as equal to 1 over square root of 2 pi integral minus infinity to plus infinity then ft e rise to minus i omega t dt. Now, in this expression, we will replace omega by minus omega. So, this is g star minus omega is equal to 1 over square root of 2 pi integral minus infinity to plus infinity then f star t here I forgot to put a star so this is f star t then e rise to minus i omega t dt so this proves the result that is g star minus omega is equal to the fourier transform of f star t so this is the conjugate property if g omega is a fourier transform of ft then the fourier transform of the complex conjugate of ft will be given by g star minus omega. From there we move on to an important theorem which is known as the convolution theorem. The convolution of functions fx and hx which are denoted by f star h is defined to be f star h equal to 
integral minus infinity to plus infinity f u h of x minus u du and let us assume that g omega and capital g omega are the fourier transforms of fx and hx respectively now we can show that 1 by 2 pi integral minus infinity to plus infinity g omega times capital g omega e rise to i omega x d omega this is equal to integral minus infinity to plus infinity f of u then h of x minus u du which is equal to the convolution of f and h that is f star h and this equation is known as the convolution theorem of Fourier transforms the convolution theorem states that the Fourier transform of the convolution of fx and hx is equal to the product of the Fourier transforms of fx and hx. Let us try to prove this. We have by definition of the Fourier transform g omega as given by 1 by square root of 2 pi integral minus infinity to plus infinity fx e rise to i omega x dx and g omega by definition we have 1 by square root of 2 pi integral minus infinity to plus infinity this is let us define this as h x prime e rise to i omega x prime then dx prime now let us multiply g omega and g omega this will be 1 by 2 pi integral minus infinity to plus infinity and fx h x dash e rise to i omega x plus x prime then dx dx prime in the next step we will put x plus x prime as equal to u therefore we can write dx dx prime as equal to dou of x x prime over dou of x u du dx where this term is known as the Jacobian of the transformation and the Jacobian is defined to be dou of x x dash divided by dou x u equal to dou x over dou x dou x over dou u then dou x prime divided by dou x and dou x prime divided by dou u we have to take the determinant of that and this will be equal to 1 0 0 1 the determinant and this will be equal to 1 so this gives us dx dx prime equal to du dx now we will write g omega multiplied by g omega as equal to 1 over 2 pi integral minus infinity to plus infinity integral minus infinity to plus infinity fx h u minus x e rise to i omega u dx du and this is equal to 1 over 2 pi integral minus infinity to plus infinity e rise to i omega u 
and we'll write that term in the middle as integral minus infinity to plus infinity fx h of u minus x du times dx so this is nothing but the Fourier transform of integral minus infinity to plus infinity fx h of u minus x du and this is equal to f the Fourier transform of the convolution of f and h that is g omega multiplied by capital g omega this is equal to the Fourier transform of the convolution of f and h or this could be written as the Fourier transform of f multiplied by the Fourier transform of h because g omega is the Fourier transform of f and uh, capital G omega is the Fourier transform of capital H. So this is equal to the Fourier transform of the convolution of F and H. So this is the convolution theorem according to which the Fourier transform of the convolution of Fx and Hx is equal to the product of the Fourier transforms of Fx and Hx. From there, we move on to yet another important relation, which is known as the Percival's relation. According to this, if G omega and capital G omega are Fourier transforms of Ft and Ht respectively, we can show that minus infinity to plus infinity G omega G star omega D omega equal to integral minus infinity to plus infinity Ft h star t dt let us try to prove this uh, we have minus infinity to plus infinity f t h star t dt so this is equal to integral minus infinity to plus infinity 1 by square root of 2 pi integral minus infinity to plus infinity g omega e rise to minus i omega t d omega multiplied by 1 by square root of 2 pi integral minus infinity to plus infinity g star x e rise to i x t then dx dt and this is equal to integral minus infinity to plus infinity g omega integral minus infinity to plus infinity g star x multiplied by 1 by 2 pi integral minus infinity to plus infinity e rise to i x minus omega t multiplied by dt dx d omega and in this expression this term constitute the Dirac delta function that we have seen earlier therefore this can be written as 
integral minus infinity to plus infinity g omega integral minus infinity to plus infinity g star x delta x minus omega dx d omega or this is equal to integral minus infinity to plus infinity f omega g star omega d omega which proves the Perseverance theorem. We will now derive the Fourier transform of derivatives. If g omega is the Fourier transform of a function fx, then the Fourier transform of df by dx is minus i omega g omega. Let us try to prove this. We have g omega as given by 1 over square root of 2 pi integral minus infinity to plus infinity fx e rise to i omega x dx. Now let us try to write the equation for dfx by dx. Let us call that by g1 omega and this is equal to 1 over square root of 2 pi integral minus infinity to plus infinity dfx over dx e rise to i omega x dx. We will perform the integration by the integration by parts method. So for that we will consider this as the second function and this as the first function. So that g1 omega is equal to first multiplied by integral of second. So that is fx within the limit minus infinity to plus infinity minus integral of differential of first that is i omega e rise to i omega x divided by square root of 2 pi multiplied by integral of second and this is equal to e rise to i omega x divided by square root of 2 pi fx from minus infinity to plus infinity minus i omega divided by square root of 2 pi integral minus infinity to plus infinity fx e rise to i omega x dx. If fx vanishes as x tend to plus or minus infinity, we have g1 omega as equal to minus i omega g omega proving the theorem. That is the transform of the derivative is minus i omega times the transform of the original function. Now we can extend this to the nth derivative to yield g n omega equal to minus i omega power n g omega. So we have covered the major aspects of Fourier transform and now what remains is to discuss some problems. Problem 1. Express the function fx which is 1 when mod x less than or equal to 1 which is equal to 0 when mod x greater than 1 as a Fourier integral. Hence evaluate sin omega cos omega x divided by omega times d omega. 
let us do the first part we have fx the expression for the Fourier integral 1 over pi integral 0 to infinite d omega integral minus infinity to plus infinity ft cos omega t minus x dt now this is equal to 1 over pi integral 0 to infinite d omega multiplied by the function is between minus 1 and plus 1 so this multiplied by ft that is 1 cos of omega t minus x dt so this is equal to 1 over pi integral 0 to infinite d omega multiplied by so the integral becomes sine omega t minus x divided by omega the integration limits are from minus 1 to plus 1 and this is equal to 1 by pi integral 0 to infinite sine of omega times 1 minus x plus sine of omega times 1 plus x divided by omega d omega now fx is equal to 2 divided by pi integral 0 to infinite sin omega cos omega x divided by omega times d omega so this is a Fourier integral so from here we have integral 0 to infinite sin omega cos omega x divided by omega times d omega as equal to pi by 2 times fx that is we have rearranged the left hand side and the right hand side therefore this gives 0 to infinite sin omega cos omega x divided by omega d omega as equal to pi by 2 or mod x less than or equal to 1 and equal to 0 or mod x greater than 1 so this is how we solve problem 1 the second problem is to find the Fourier transform of the slit function fx which is equal to 1 over epsilon when mod x is less than or equal to epsilon and equal to 0 when mod x is greater than epsilon and we also have to determine the limit of this transform as epsilon 10 to 0 and discuss the result we have g omega as equal to 1 over square root of 2 pi integral minus infinity to plus infinity fx e rise to i omega x times dx so this is equal to 1 over square root of 2 pi integral minus epsilon to plus epsilon 1 by epsilon e rise to i omega x dx and this is equal to 1 over square root of 2 pi multiplied by 1 over epsilon multiplied by e rise to i omega x divided by i omega from minus epsilon to plus epsilon and this is equal to 1 over square root of 2 pi 1 over epsilon e rise to i omega epsilon minus e rise to minus i omega epsilon divided by i omega 
and this is equal to 1 over square root of 2 pi times 1 over omega epsilon multiplied by 2 sine omega epsilon. So this is the first part. The second part is to determine the limit of this transform as epsilon 10 to 0 and discuss the result. So we have limit epsilon 10 to 0 g omega this is equal to limit epsilon 10 to 0 square root of 2 divided by pi times sine omega e divided by omega e. So this is in the 0 by 0 form. Therefore, we rewrite this as limit epsilon 10 to 0 square root of 2 over pi dou by dou epsilon of sine omega epsilon divided by dou by dou epsilon of omega epsilon. This is equal to limit epsilon 10 to 0 square root of 2 over pi then omega cos omega epsilon divided by omega and this is equal to square root of 2 over epsilon. So that's the Fourier transform of g omega approaches to square root of 2 by pi as epsilon 10 to 0 while the function itself approaches to infinity as x 10 to 0. Now the function and its Fourier transform are plotted in the following figure. So this is fx and this is gx. Problem 3. Find the Fourier transform of the Gaussian distribution function fx equal to n e raised to minus alpha x square where n and alpha are constants. So as before we have g omega given by 1 over square root of 2 pi integral minus infinity to plus infinity fx e raised to i omega x dx and this is equal to 1 over square root of 2 pi integral minus infinity to plus infinity for fx we substitute n e raised to minus alpha x square e raised to i omega x dx. So this is equal to n over square root of 2 pi integral minus infinity to plus infinity e raised to minus alpha x square minus i omega x dx. So this is equal to n over square root of 2 pi integral minus infinity to plus infinity e raised to minus alpha then we'll uh, rearrange these terms as x square minus i omega x over alpha then we'll make a substitution i omega divided by 2 alpha the whole square minus i omega divided by 2 alpha the whole square. Then multiplied by dx. Now g omega this is equal to n over square root of 2 pi integral minus infinity to plus infinity e raised to minus alpha then x minus i omega divided by 2 alpha the whole square multiplied by e raised to alpha 
i omega divided by 2 alpha the whole square times dx and this is equal to n divided by square root of 2 pi then e rise to minus alpha omega square divided by 4 alpha square integral minus infinity to plus infinity e rise to minus alpha x minus i omega divided by 2 alpha the whole square times dx this is equal to n over square root of 2 pi e rise to minus omega square divided by 4 alpha then integral minus infinity to plus infinity e rise to minus alpha y square dy where we have made this substitution x minus i omega divided by 2 alpha equal to y or dx equal to dy and this is equal to n over square root of 2 pi e rise to minus omega square divided by 4 alpha multiplied by this integral turns out to be pi divided by alpha upon simplification this becomes n divided by square root of 2 alpha e rise to minus omega square divided by 4 alpha which is the result now problem number 4 find the sign Fourier transform of e rise to minus ax over x the sign Fourier transform is defined as square root of 2 over pi integral 0 to infinite fx sine omega x dx and this is equal to square root of 2 over pi integral 0 to infinite e rise to minus ax divided by x sine omega x dx now we will try to calculate ds omega divided by d omega this will be equal to square root of 2 divided by pi integral 0 to infinite e rise to minus ax divided by x times x cos omega x dx and this is equal to square root of 2 divided by pi integral 0 to infinite e rise to minus ax cos omega x dx and we have this relation integral 0 to infinite e rise to minus ax cos omega x dx as equal to a divided by a square plus omega square therefore this equation becomes square root of 2 over pi a divided by a square plus omega square now integrating this with respect to omega we will get gs omega as equal to square root of 2 over pi tan inverse omega over a plus a where a is the constant of integration when omega is 0 gs omega this is equal to gs of 0 and this is equal to a but by definition
gs at omega equal to 0 is equal to 0. So this gives us a as equal to 0 and gs omega is therefore given by square root of 2 over pi then tan inverse omega over a which is the required answer. Now problem number 5. Find the cosine Fourier transform of the function fx defined to be 1 when x between 0 and a equal to 0 when x is greater than or equal to a. And what is a function whose cosine transform is square root of 2 pi pi sine ap divided by p. So the question has two parts. Part a is to find the cosine Fourier transform of this particular function. Now the Fourier cosine transform fx is given by gs omega equal to square root of 2 over pi integral 0 to infinite fx cos omega x dx this is equal to square root of 2 over pi integral 0 to a fx cos omega x dx so we have split the integral in the two intervals plus integral a to infinite fx cos omega x dx so obviously the second term is zero because in this interval fx is equal to zero so this is integral 2 over pi then 0 to a 1 times cos omega x dx and this is equal to square root of 2 over pi sin omega a divided by a so this is a required answer now let us proceed towards part b So it is given that gp equal to square root of 2 over pi then sine ap divided by p. So this can be written as g omega equal to square root of 2 over pi then sine a omega divided by omega. Now the Fourier inverse cosine transform is fx equal to square root of 2 over pi integral 0 to infinite g omega cos omega x d omega and this is equal to square root of 2 over pi integral 0 to infinite square root of 2 over pi sin a omega divided by omega cos omega x d omega. So we have substituted for g omega. And this will be equal to 1 over pi integral 0 to infinite sin a plus x omega plus sin a minus x omega divided by omega times d omega and this is equal to 1 over pi integral 0 to infinite sin a plus x omega divided by omega plus sin a minus x omega divided by omega then d omega. 
but we have this relation integral 0 to infinite sin ax over x dx equal to pi by 2 for a greater than 0. Therefore, this is equal to 1 by pi times pi by 2 plus pi by 2. This is equal to 1 if x is less than a and that is equal to 1 by pi times pi by 2 minus pi by 2 which is equal to 0 if x is greater than a. So this is a function whose transform is given by square root of 2 by pi sin ap divided by pi. So with that we conclude our discussion on Fourier transforms.